To this now, the presidency says South Africa will remain a signatory of uh, the Rome Statute and will continue to participate in the International Criminal Court. In a statement released last night, the presidency says President Cyril Ramaphosa and the ANC Secretary General Fikile Mbalula aired in a saying that South Africa will be withdrawing from the Rome Statute. The presidency now says the country will remain a signatory to the ICC in line with the resolutions of the ANC's 55th National Conference. Let's now get analysis on this matter. We're now joined via Zoom by Nzali Matebula, a lecturer in the Department of International Relations at the University of Johannesburg. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Now, it seems as though government has made a U-turn, certainly in the decision to withdraw from the International National Criminal Court as a signatory. What should we be reading into this as South Africa? Thank you for having me today. Uh, so um, this is an indication uh, with the response to the warrant of ar arrest that was issued by ICC itself on the arrest of Putin. So I believe that it's in response to the warrant, seeing that um, they might not have uh, jurisdiction or rather they might not be able to, or that there's high unlikeliness to arrest Putin. Therefore, uh, they might opt as the last resolution, as they've said, to actually withdraw from the ICC in interest of protecting foreign relations with Russia. I would imagine even if South Africa did withdraw from the ICC, they would still be very much obligated to make this arrest um, warrant or execute the arrest warrant against uh, President uh, Putin should he land in the country. I mean, just given, uh, uh, you know, some of the, the laws, I would imagine, that, 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 that are around the ICC, but also the, the, the time span. I mean, he is coming in a couple of months into this country. That is true. That is true. Um, however, seeing that uh, Ukraine, no Ukraine or Russia are actually uh, member states of the ICC, there is no automatic jurisdiction. Therefore, it becomes very tricky as to how the warrant is issued and how uh, the arrest should be executed. Now, of course, you know, the country is facing a lot of pressure from the West. The U.S., however, uh, did say that they didn't pressure South Africa, you know, to arrest Putin. Um, talk to us about the various scenarios then that South Africa is uh, facing, um, given, as I said, that, you know, uh, Putin has accepted uh, that invitation to attend the BRICS summit. So currently what you're seeing is that South Africa is caught between a rock and a hard place where we have relations both with the West and uh, the BRICS bloc, but at the same time, we are signatory to the ICC. Therefore, um, according to international law and the constitution of South Africa, we are, we are supposed to follow suit with what the ICC has to say because it would bring harsh criticism you not know, to actually execute the arrest. But at the same time, um, there's a downside to it whereby our economic cooperation, our trade relations would then be affected. But then at the same time, I do believe that South Africa finds itself in a very hard place where the dilemma is in saying that by not arresting the president of Russia, then we would be seen as condoning uh, the atrocities that were, um, that were issued last year in Ukraine, therefore we in support of such uh, human crimes. Uh, the, question, the question probably then, um, and the criticism probably comes at the time in which South Africa wants to pull out from the ICC. I mean, we've seen this before with Al Bashir in uh, 2015, 2016, where South Africa intended to pull out there um, under the Zuma administration. Again, during this time, it's another president, uh, but circumstances still apply. Uh, what does this mean from, you know, just an international community perspective? How is the world viewing South Africa now in, in, in as far as its reasons for wanting to pull out of the ICC? Okay, so I, I do believe that this is multifactored. Uh, it's in it's in many ways. So uh, reason being that international law is aspirational at times. It doesn't apply the same uh, in, in, in many, many forms. So uh, the application and the litigation that comes with international law is in accordance to where they're applying and against whom it is applying. So um, with the case of many African states, uh, the ICC has been heavily criticized and how they actually um, execute their litigation. But at the same time, 
uh, in the case of Ukraine, from a human rights lens, then South Africa is viewed as the bad guy, whereby by not arresting the president of uh, Russia, we would be seen as the bad guy and in condoning uh, war crimes um, and um, war crimes against humanity. But at the same time, there are power plays in all of this. There, are, there is a political instrument where some, mostly economic structuralists, would say that um, it is biased, international law is biased, and um, it's in accordance to um, who wants to actually pull out their political interests through this um, mechanism or using ICC as an instrument. So then uh, the scenarios and what it means for South Africa itself is is very much multifactored. It depends on different levels and different fields of studies and uh, yeah. Talk to us about just the, um, you know, some of the international relations around um, South Africa and Russia. Of course, we know that these are deep rooted uh, relationship uh, w with the country and, and just the implication in terms of, you know, should South Africa find itself having no choice but to execute that arrest warrant? So I do believe that uh, the decision or the the decision to pull out of the IEC is an indication that South Africa is not willing to execute the arrest. That's that's what I believe. So it is an indication. It's in preventing the arrest from happening, um, seeing that August the summit is happening. But at the same time, uh, by the time in which the summit happens, the withdrawal process wouldn't have been finalized. And I would like to mention also that there is something that we call uh, diplomatic immunity and presidential immunity, whereby um, no one is allowed to uh, arrest you when you're in a foreign country, so by jurisdiction. So what you find here is law sometimes, it becomes very multifactored and preferential. So then it becomes tricky as to why he should be arrested and how by the justification from international law, from trade relations. So. It's multifactored. I do believe that it is a complex conundrum that needs to be unpacked. But at the same time, I don't see the arrest happening. We shouldn't, I don't think the arrest will happen. And by South Africa intending to pull out from the ICC is an indication that actually um, it is refuting or it is some form of repudiation um, of the ICC's warrant. Nzali, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Really do appreciate your analysis, Nzali Matebula, unpacking, of course, the complexity and the murky water South Africa is finding itself in around this matter.